live from the FIA Barcelona Gran Via Conference Center in Barcelona, Spain. It's The Cube at HP Discover Barcelona 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, HP. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. HP Discover 2014 live here on the ground for the second day of three days of coverage. This is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and expect a similar noise. I'm John Furrier, with my co-host Dave Vellante, uh, 50 year doing HP Discover uh, in Barcelona, having a great time. Our next guest is uh, Nariman Temorian, SVP, General Manager of Converge Systems. Uh, welcome back to the Cube. Good to see you Thank in you. the HP uh, HP outfit. Working at HP, driving the Converge infrastructure. Uh, we were just talking before we came on about your background in software and, 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 and kind of how that relates to this modern world. So I want to get into that, but first, uh, I just want to throw, throw the opening question to you, which is, what's going on at the big picture? Because a lot of people are confused on the definition of converged. Is it con hyper-converged, there's converged systems, hyperscale? How do you sort it out for someone who's sitting out there saying, hey, I got a lot of problems, I just want to figure out what way to put the architecture? Well, thanks for having me here, and uh, great question. So we see convergence as a new way of uh, customers essentially purchasing uh, infrastructure. And uh, the model of uh, infrastructure acquisition and the model in, and uh, configuration is changing. Um, they're not buying pieces anymore. They're not buying storage, networking, and uh, compute pieces. They're buying it in a way that essentially arrives with a management layer on top that allows them to fundamentally be able to bring up the infrastructure much quicker. So we saw, you know, converged systems breaking down silos, uh, systems that are arriving that were purpose built and to be delivered to deliver a specific workload, basically an outcome, business driven outcome that came out of the box. What is happening with convergence is that just like everything else, convergence is moving towards a software defined concept. So. The automation layer, this infrastructure management layer is becoming significantly important in convergence. And so the new hyper-converged boxes that are arriving in the market, these things are essentially designed to very quickly have a very simple front-end management solution that essentially arrives and is able to deliver a very specific outcome. They are, there's a low cost to entry, but everything is about the management solution and the scale-out opportunity associated with the storage. What we see happening and moving into the market you know, in the next generation of hyperconvergence is what we call software-defined convergence. And that really is primarily focused on managing multitudes of different converged boxes using a single automation. Give an example layer. of that, because that's, that's so, a really good point. Yeah, so you know, a good example of that would be that you have an automation layer that essentially not only manages, for example, HP converged systems, but it could also manage another third party's converged system box. But you're using the same automation layer, the same front end, the same level of the software to manage your infrastructure essentially in a sense that the, the infrastructure is delivered in essentially body cubes. I use the word cubes. These are essentially uh, you know, blocks of storage, blocks of networking, blocks of memory that are sitting behind the automation layer. Could be from HP, could be from some other vendor, but are designed to give you the opportunity to launch an application, virtualized or non-virtualized, and have an access to this physical infrastructure behind them. So Who we writes can, that software? Is that HP software? Is that yeah, it's a great. So we um, have a point of view on that, of course, <laughs> and uh, we are designing our HP OneView platform to essentially do that. Initially, the HP OneView platform is focused on managing HP's conversion infrastructure models. But we're beginning to introduce the interoperability of HP OneView. Um, we have announced the enabling of the uh, Cisco's top of rack on our HP OneView. And as time goes, but we've also announced the uh, integration of HP OneView with VMware and Microsoft products. Uh, we have a Citrix integration platform. And as time goes by, we will be integrating more uh, third-party solutions. So as time goes by, HP OneView becomes this layer, from our perspective, 
that can manage multitudes of different types Third of Third party and even HP, OpenStack. That's exactly <laughs> correct, and that's exactly the point. In fact, we just announced our C, uh, hyper-converged CS200, which is with OneView, our Helion, stat, uh, uh, Helion technology, as well as our uh, software-defined stored virtual products. So it's a you know, low-cost to entry uh, uh, product. Um, we also have the same version of that with our EvoRail, with the uh, VMware EvoRail product, which we have built based on uh, the HP infrastructure. So, so as time goes by, so just follow up on that, John. So the, the, talk about the difference between converged and hyper-converged. Yeah. Some confusion in the marketplace. Yeah. So how, how should we think? So I think the major difference between converged and hyper-converged is the the drive behind the front end virtualization layer. All hyper-converged boxes are arriving with a virtualization layer. Mostly at the time, VMware's virtualization. Below that sits a direct attached storage that is essentially designed to scale out very quickly. So the difference between a converged infrastructure box, converged system box, and a hyper-converged box is, the hyper-converged box is fully virtualized, it is purpose-built, it, scale it scales out very quickly, and it is workload specific. And so it's designed really to e extend the edges of your uh, data center into your remote and back office. The hyper-converged box is not yet enterprise grade ready. So you're not going to be running your critical mission application on a hyper-converged box inside your enterprise. But if you want to extend your workload all the way to the edges of your enterprise into your remote and back offices, you want to use a hyper-converged box to deploy there. It is easy to deploy, it is easy to use, it is efficient, and it is a, it is a low cost of entry into it. What we did with our hyper-converged platform, we essentially set to the market for the small to medium-sized businesses or for your remote offices, we're going to build you a box that has a private cloud implementation. So we built Helion OpenStack, integrated with, we integrated with our OneView platform. When the box arrives, it gets plugged into the wall, it immediately gives you a private cloud implementation without you having to do anything. And then it dials up to the data center and says, I'm here, what do you want to serve to me? And I think that is the use case that is fundamentally important for enterprises today. Okay, and then the other piece about the hyper-converged you've got some software magic to connect all these exactly right. together. That's exactly right. That's right. Yeah, and, and that's your software. That's right. Results. So we have the OneView platform in our solution, and of course, you have VMware, our partner, they have announced the Evo Rail platform, which we also support on HP platform. Mm -hmm. So it's a partnership effort with our partners at VMware, and then we have our own solution, and they are really designed for different use cases. So one of the things I want to chat with you about, we talked before camera, your background, I want to get into some personal things. You were you know, an ex-military career, but you worked on a lot of different great, cool projects. And why I bring this up is two reasons. One, there's a huge hacker culture going on right now in the tech community, in our audience, around Maker, you know, tinkering, you've got open computer, you see people building their own boxes. Um, so talk about the story about, uh, you, you did some work around drones, which was essentially automating away the yeah. human part of <laughs> flying. Uh, for military purposes, but that brings up a good point. That problem you were solving is portable to some of the things happening now. Talk about how that's important and certainly what that means for the entrepreneurs out there, the tinkerers, building stuff. Yeah. What did you learn and yeah. what did you share? So, you know, I, I come from a startup background. I've done four companies before I came to HP. We first met when I sold my company, Gale Technologies, to Dell. The single common theme in my career is about automation. And to those who are out there looking, I think automation is the most important thing. With the drone program, we were trying to essentially get rid of um, having to have individuals on the battlefield because we did not. We wanted to reduce the casualty rate and wanted to make sure that drones provide a significantly bigger flexibility and automate the process of gathering surveillance and you know, managing the battlefield. So the idea was remove the humans from the battlefield, automate the process. Automation is a single thing across my career, and I think to the people who are, to the folks that are building things, uh, they want to do their own startup, um, my suggestion is the three things. One, pick a problem to solve that is real, and you have customers who are suffering from whatever that complex complexity is, 
try to solve that problem. Two, remain absolutely focused. You know, going in the ocean is not the right thing to do. The drone program is a very focused program. It does very few things very well. And then lastly, uh, you need to have a solution that's fast, efficient, and simple. Uh, we are trying to do that in HP today with our converged systems. It is fast, it is efficient, it is simple, and it's really designed to solve a very specific problem. Um, and so we consider ourselves a brand new business in HP, uh, kind of a startup in a very large company, although we have a lot more revenue than <laughs> traditional startups do, but we run it like that, and it's really focused on those principles. Now, now your division, your, your business unit, is it, is it a P&L, is it an overlay? Yeah, no, no, it's a, it's a problem. Not to get too much into it. No, 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 it's a business unit, and it's, it has its own P&L. Okay, and so, well, how does that work? So if I'm a storage guy, yeah. and I'm, I want credit for that, yeah. is, 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 is it some yeah. internal accounting, or how does that work? No, that's, a, that's an actually an excellent question, as everyone who does converge systems knows. Um, we are incenting everyone within HP to sell conversion infrastructure and converge systems. And specifically this year, I think everyone gets um, significant accelerations to sell converged systems. So everyone across from storage, you know, um, compute, networking folks across our enterprise group are incented, even our cloud folks are incented to essentially sell converged systems. So everybody is compensated in that same program and everybody essentially, and, and, and as you saw on stage yesterday, um, converged infrastructure is front and center um, and converged systems is front and center to our leadership and to many of our customers. So let's use the terminology, sorry, Jim. You use the yeah. converged infrastructure, converged yeah. systems. And again, help us understand yeah. the difference. So, you know, convergence is really around bringing different pieces of compute, storage, and networking together um, so that you can have a specific business outcome. So you could essentially buy our compute and you buy our networking and you try to bring them together so that you can essentially have a specific business outcome. And we've had our virtual connect switch, for example, that essentially has brought compute and networking together through a single management using our inside control to be able to manage it. Converged systems is around building purpose-built purpose systems that are workload optimized. And so rather than putting the pieces together just so that you can have a convergence, you're taking it the next step further by building a purpose-built system, bringing compute network and storage, and most importantly, adding the automation layer, HP One View that we talked about, which is the front-end system to everything that we do, and then having One View deliver a workload for a specific business outcome. CS900 and 500, the two platforms that we have, are data management platforms. They deliver SAP HANA, they deliver the Microsoft APS, and they're designed to deliver real-time analytics when they are plugged into the wall, configured and delivered to the customer. Okay, so it's uh, one works, works together, the other is, a, like say, purpose-built, it's a single skew. Yeah, that's right. Yes, right? correct. That's correct. Although, it's got options. Yes. So we had uh, Jeff Carlett and uh, Chris Swan on yesterday. Yes, that's correct. And, and from Avnet, and essentially, you just mentioned, too, you, you accommodate Cisco top rack that's switches. Right. That's right. Yeah. I thought that was heresy inside of HP. No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay, so, I, I, I want you to, yeah, absolutely. So the not. point is, though, that, that even though you've got this converged system, yes. that's a purpose-built system and a single skew, you've got some flexibility in there. Oh, absolutely. Right. Flexibility is the key. Um, what you want to be able to do is to accommodate customer environments, and you want to make sure that you fundamentally solve customer problems. So if 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 you don't provide flexibility in the compute, in the storage and networking layer, you're essentially not accommodating the customer. So we build a purpose-built system for a specific outcome, we validate and certify it. We also build reference architectures. So essentially that says there are different variation that might accommodate a customer environment. We validate and certify those. So it comes in multiple flavors. And it is designed to be interoperable. So Cisco is one example, VMware and Microsoft are other examples. You want to give customers the choice. You want to buy an appliance model, you want it very specific, you want it to show up at your in your front door and it unboxes it, you know, you unbox it and plug it in the wall works, you have that option. If you want to have variation of compute network and storage within that same environment, you have that option. If you want to buy a reference architecture, you also have that Yeah, option. so you buy the convert system, you choice 
is, is fundamental, but you got to draw the line somewhere. That's correct. You're not putting Dell servers in there. Or, or, yeah, or, no, we're not planning on putting Dell. Dell servers? I heard handhelds last exactly. time I heard. Uh, <laughs> although right. Michael tells him, we're not going to no, mobile business. No, all due respect with Michael. I used um, to work for him. He's great. Yeah. Uh, so i got to go back to your uh, advice for startups and bring yeah. that, tie that back in. So one of the things that we study, obviously, a lot of startups and, and growing business around Converge, too, is um, automation. You mentioned that um, crowd chat was booming on that. Tim Crawford, automation's underestimated. Big point yeah. there. Great, totally agree. But I want to bring in a new element of uh, success. Reducing the steps it takes to do something. Yes, uh, Making something easy to use. Okay. And uh, elegant. Yes, that's right. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So Converge does that. Yeah. So what aspects of that, what steps does it remove? Yeah. Um, how does it make someone's life easier? Yep. So talk through some of those benefits because yep. again, these are the success. If these are like generic success formulas, like yep. hey, people like yep. things easier. Yeah. They like to reduce complexity. Yeah. You know, I think when I talk to customers, the biggest thing that I hear from our customers is, you know, when I have to build my infrastructure, big bring it up, configure it, provision it, load the hypervisor, load the application, that could take hours, weeks, sometimes months. And I'm in the business of providing services to my end users. So IT operation ex you know, executives, you know, uh, managers, VPs always tell me, I'm in the business of delivering services to my customer, and guess what the customer wants? They want faster services, faster and faster and faster. So what Converse Systems is, the promise of Converse System, is that you can provision and configure and deliver your infrastructure much quicker than if you did it on your own. And it is because it's purpose-built, or if it's you know, if it's uh, flexible, you have validated it, you have configured it, you have tested it for the customer, you know exactly what the outcome is going to be. So it removes that whole complexity of having to build. Then it's a matter of operation. So life cycle management becomes extremely important. You want this thing to be able to do its own patch control, do its own bias management, do its own firmware management, call home when it's got a problem, have you a show up and fix it, or dial into it and fix it. So life cycle management becomes important. So it's about ease of bringing it up fast. It's about managing it moving forward in a way that it's seamless. It's about the ease of use. You have to have a front end management solution that's easy to use for people, so that when they get involved and they start working with it, they don't have to relearn a tool. And ultimately, you need to be able to free up those individuals who are doing infrastructure management to build applications. So, new business model. so automation, great. What about orchestration? Talk yeah. about that because that's that right. comes up in cloud conversations all the time. That's As you right. move up towards the app right. and the software layer, it's Excellent orchestration, auto and that's or automation, right. then orchestration. Yeah. So uh, I sold a company to Dell called Gale Technologies, and it was one of the first generation of converged systems orchestration tools. And orchestration is a very critical element of building a converged system. Because not only you want to orchestrate the configuration and provisioning of the physical infrastructure, you also want to be able to orchestrate how VMers, VM, you know, to, you know, VM, your VMs are deployed. You want to be able to figure out exactly how you're going to be, so be able to launch your application. So we have introduced the concept of templates. Um, it's not a new concept, but it is within HP OneView. These templates are built essentially to contain everything physical infrastructure, virtual machines, and applications. And the templates are used for you to be able to orchestrate the way and the steps you want these things to be essentially deployed. So we're taking the configuration and provisioning a step further by deploying templates that have a very specific recipe. You know, some of you folks were essentially designed to be able to use. Uh, so to would, it, would it be easy, would it be, um right to, to talk about automation and orchestration as technology policy and business policy? Yes, yeah. I, I, think that's, I think it's a very good way of an analyzing it because you have a set of policies around your IT operations and then you have very specific business requirements. You know, look, let's face it, the only reason you have the IT infrastructure is because you have a business problem to solve. Otherwise, you would not be there. So the business rules have to guide control that, and that's extremely important. So I want to ask a personal question now that get towards the end of the segment. Um, great background, love that you're an entrepreneur inside HP. Now, talk about that. How, why HP? Why now? What got you motivated here? 
what's the spark? Did Meg pull you into a room and get you in a headlock? Would she give you a special candy? No. Uh, <laughs> drug you up? I mean, what what'd she do to convince no, you? Actually, what it, happened? It was simple. I spoke to Bell, uh, to Meg and Bill Beckty, uh, who is uh, who runs EG Enterprise Group. And the message was really simple. They said, we're doing a couple of things. First, we want to turn this company around, and then we want to innovate. So I said, okay, innovation is kind of table stakes for large companies, right? They said, no, we want to innovate in a way that directly impacts the way the customers, um, the business outcomes that the customers are essentially focused on. So for me, it was extremely important to go somewhere where there was going to be innovation. There was going to be a senior leadership from the CEO down focus on how we were going to solve business problems for the customers. And then the commitment to a vision for the future, which we have done with our computer systems and we're doing with our SDN, we're doing with new technologies that we're creating, not only on EG, but in ES and in our software. So for me, yeah, becoming to a large company was, you know, a question, a hesitation, but since I've been yeah, here, a lot of people, I mean, honestly, will say, hey, why are you going there? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm sure you get that. I get that yeah. all the time. People are like, hey, HBR. Uh, so, shared vision yeah. for you. Absolutely. That's number one. That's absolutely Passion. Right. Your passion's yeah. there. Uh, management team commitment yeah. to innovation. Yes. That's right. Not slacking off. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you vet that out. No lip service. You can, That's right. You look them in right, right in right. the eyes and be like, okay, yeah. I can see it. Yeah. And then three. Um, and the desire, and this is important, the desire to go fast. Yeah. Large companies are not known for doing things fast, yeah. but the sense of urgency inside HP to go fast is very impressive for me, and we're doing everything we can to ensure yeah. that that speed is there. So I'm very excited to be well, here. Well, they're lucky to have you. I'd say you're really you. impressive uh, tech athlete, as we say in the queue, yeah, the ESPN of tech, and you know, I love the background with the drones. It's so awesome. You have no software up and down. It's great. And I think you're hitting all the right marks with, the, with uh, Converge. I mean, Reduces the time it takes to do something, yeah. simplify, solve yeah. a problem, solve customer problems, and you know, do it fast with innovation. And you got a lot of muscle behind HP. There's a lot of there's a lot of technology laying around. There's a lot of great innovation, and we have very great customers. Customer loyalty is extremely high, and we're very, very pleased and extremely excited about our customers and we thank them every day. So do you have a license to go over and tool and everyone's tool chest and kind of peek around? Because kind of converge yeah. is one of those things where you go, yeah. okay, open the kimono, let me see what you got in the tool so chest. So you guys, if you saw the keynote yesterday, you saw we integrated HP OneView with our software, uh, uh, we ops analytics from our software. So that was exactly what happened. We went to the software guys and said, look, we're looking for predictive analytics, what do you have? And they said, Ops Analytics, we looked at it and we said, we want to be able to give our customers a very, very, very fast way. It's about a speed, about efficiency. Yeah. Fast way of figuring out if there's a problem. They said, this thing does that. We integrated yeah. our one view with analytics, and now we have the capability to, pro to offer predictive analytics to our customers. So that's an example of just going around and saying, what do you guys have? We're going to be doing that with our Fortify solution. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in HP. They're all great. And we're going to put them together. You know, it's interesting, Dave and I were talking about kind of, we're doing a story on uh, uh, Andy Jassy and Amazon and, and looking at other modern leaders like Steve yeah. Jobs and looking at, you know, business leaders yeah. from Rockefeller, sure. Carnegie, and they were pure play, one trick ponies, yeah. oil, steel. And you look at the modern era now of entrepreneurs that are really not nailing it, they're all multi-purpose um, techies. Yeah. You know, Jobs is a multi-product guy, you could, uh, Amazon integrates stacks, so the world is going to that, so the, the product development opportunity for HP is not to have some magic epiphany in the lab, and here's a new product, gold, and yeah. we're going to sell that one product, but it's really about a combination of technology. Yes, it is. Do you look, agree? I agree with you. Um, we are focused on new things to do. But the things that we do well, I think, is to put the technologies that we have together to deliver a solution to our customer and essentially matters. Now, having said that, we are also looking forward to the next five years. We have the machine, I'm sure you've heard of it, with Memorister, with our photonics capabilities, with the fact that we believe computing has to be redefined fundamentally. But you're absolutely correct. Customers are demanding that we do some things very well. Give them innovation partner with each other, whether or not we're friends or foe, and at the, at the end of the day, deliver a solution to them that works when it comes out of the box. And it's easy, it's fast, 
it's efficient, um, and it fundamentally gives them business agility. Nariman, thanks so much for joining us on theCUBE. Uh, great to see you here with HP and great reasons to join us. Awesome, very impressed. This is theCUBE, we are here live at HP Discover in Barcelona. We'll be right back after this short break.